Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Uh, John, how you doing? Uh, I'm doing well, and look who's with us, Art. It's Manny Pacheco. Manny, all things Hollywood. Uh, speaking of Hollywood, we uh, a while back we talked about the studios and things like that. Who do you think was the greatest uh, head of those studios back in that studio era? Well, uh, there's one that pops up. He wasn't exactly the head because uh, Louis B. Mayer was the head of MGM. But when Louis B. Mayer hired Irving Thalberg, uh, that transformed MGM from being one of the big five to the studio of studios and uh he was also a boy wonder i mean he was very young 22 23 when he was hired during the uh during the silent era uh he made stars of so many great um now today considered great uh, uh performers beginning with uh lon cheney and joan crawford really and, uh, lon cheney. yeah yeah and and john gilbert yeah in the silent era he he was he made stars of of, of some really we now know as really iconic uh, actors and actresses well now that's interesting because i uh, i remember the name irving thalberg uh i didn't picture him being active in the silent era i picture him with all the famous movies that he made all the long past the quote talky you know transition into the 30s yeah yeah, yeah. He, but actually he had a 13 year career and that's part of that is the sign and i mean 1925 is what we're looking at and to, to to 24 25 to 1937 he was prolific and and that silent era really was a great time for mgm because it gave him an opportunity to grow as a studio and um and the movies that were really made i mean his movies include The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, we're talking about the silent version with Lon Chaney. And um, it was an immensely popular movie. Lon Chaney is not often mentioned with Charlie Chaplin and uh, Douglas Fairbanks as one of the great uh, performers. But Lon Chaney was not only as big as them, uh, may have been bigger at the time. Only Rin Tin Tin more prolific. But uh, yeah, it's all because of uh, Irving Thalberg's a savvy way of, of, of developing productions. He was known for developing dozens of productions a year, maybe a maybe hundreds. Uh, and, and the productions all were good. He wanted to change MGM from being a studio with no identity to making it a studio of fine drama. It was only after the passing of Irving Thalberg that MGM became known for its fabulous epic musicals that was uh, a product of the, the regime of Dory Sherry. But Irving Thalberg made these fine, fine dramas. And then he met a woman uh, during the silent era that he would shape and make her the early queen of MGM. Her name was Norma Shearer, uh, who was really trying hard to keep up with the Greta Garbos and the Joan Crawfords and really trying to find a... a, a some sort of angle to her career. Well, not only did she find the angle in becoming a very popular pre-code uh, actress of the early 1930s, but she also found a suitor and, and ultimately a husband. She married Irving Thalberg. Right. You can do a lot worse than having the head of the production team as your, uh, as your spouse. <laughs> so I have a question. I, think I have a question for you, Manny. So um, yeah. uh, just for me to understand the, the timing of all of this, when was Thalberg, uh, what was his era, uh, a year span? 1924 to 1937. He was only 22, 23 when he was hired, and he died very, very young, 1937. Wow. Uh, he, was only, he was only 38 years of age, 39. He was very young when he passed away. We'll get into that a little bit later, though. I don't, I don't want to pass up on that idea that he was uh, unfortunately not remembered as well because of the fact that he died so young. But what, but Manny, wasn't the Wizard of Oz an MGM production? Yeah, but that was after he that, was, that was done. After he, was he, gone. he had nothing to do with that? Yeah, he, the script passed. You know, the Wizard of Oz script passed on his desk. He wanted to uh, wanted to produce it, but he wasn't in a hurry. That, that 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 production didn't excite him. What excited him were the modern, epic, lush, lavish dramas, Marie Antoinette. Right. Yeah. He he created the definitive version of Mutiny on a Bounty, 
Yeah. He was the one that uh, that put Clark Gable in a film he did not want to be in. Gable earned one of his uh, Academy Award nominations because of Mutiny on the Bounty. Uh, Charles Lawton is magnificent in this film, made a star of French shot tone. Uh, Mutiny on the Bounty is one of the greatest examples of what a Irving Thalberg uh, movie should look like. And um, not only that, he was also prolific in the way he g garnered a stable of stars. He was the, the person who actually approached Paramount Studios to release the Marx Brothers so that they could become MGM property. Ah. And, yeah, and one of the films they made, A Night at the Opera, is considered by many maybe the greatest Marx Brothers film of all. And that was a uh, that was a, an Irving Thalberg creation. They made their second film, A Day at the Races, before completion of that film. It's when Irving Thalberg died. And Groucho Marx is quoted as saying that the day Irving Thalberg died was the day that he lost interest in making movies. Now, they made another bunch of movies over the next five or six years, but they just never were as good as their Paramount pictures or the films that were made when Dory Sherry was, I'm sorry, when Irving Thalberg was alive. So that's that, that all you have to do is hear, you know, the, the, the argument that Groucho Marx makes. And that's all you need to know about about Irving Thalberg. Yeah. And uh, am I correct, uh, Manny, that uh, Thalberg used a lot of literature as a basis for his movies? Uh, a lot of well-known books. I, I Absolutely. think of Mutiny on the Bounty, for instance. He, he found that the, the written word by great, by great authors, uh, great novelists, um, perfect fodder to make uh, terrific, lush, lavish movies. And he did. And, and, and he found uh, he, he used uh, Pearl Buck and her uh, fabulous uh, story about uh, about the, the, the Chinese Revolution. Yeah. Um, the Good Earth was his. He was the one that made one of the grandest films, uh, The Great Ziegfeld. And in a small part, as his first wife, Louise Rayner, was cast. Everybody thought, well, why is this woman, who is a great star in a very small role, why would you waste her? Let's expand the role. He says, no, it's supposed to be a small role. Myrna Loy will become the second wife, Billy Burke. But I think that there is one essential scene we need Louise Rayner in. That's the scene where she's basically told she uh, must accept a divorce by Ziegfeld. And all you have to do is see her face on the screen as she's holding the phone. It earned her the first of two Academy Awards. Yeah. The next year she played Olan, the, uh, the very quiet, uh, subservient uh, Chinese wife to Paul Muni in, uh, in The Good Earth. Be barely has a word in the movie. Uh, again, uh, Louis B. Mayer is balking. Why are we using Louise Rayner, a great actress with virtually no dialogue, no, 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 no words at all, and she wins her second Academy Award, back to back. He knew how to cast a film. He knew how to produce a film, and he knew how to produce a film under budget. So that's that's Irving. That's really the, the tale of Irving Thalberg. Now, if you want to talk about his personal life, he worked himself to exhaustion. All he knew how to do was work. His marriage to Norma Shera, by all accounts, was very happy. But they didn't spend a lot of time together because he was busy at work. And because of it, because of the hard work he did, he ended up with a bad heart. He had all sorts of heart problems and digestive problems. And he was a sickly individual, even though he was only 30. And as a side note, a famous salad was created because of Irving Thalberg's digestive problems. Um, they were a big fan of going to lunch, Norma Scherer and Irving Thalberg, over at the uh, the Brown Derby. And so the owner, his last name was Cobb, you might see where this is going, uh, he was uh, asked by Irving Thalberg to please compartmentalize all of his salad ingredients because he couldn't eat them all at the same time because it would upset his digestion. And so Cobb created a compartmentalized salad, and he, of course, because he owned the Brown Derby and he had a lot of influence... Did I, uh, did I just freeze? You did. Oh, I, but I'm back. Yeah. And, they, <laughs> and they called it the Cobb salad. The Cobb salad has a Holly, Hollywood history. How about that? Yep. Yep. Because and I always have a Cobb salad. And this was a, for Thalberg. He, he uh, invented it 
or created it for him, the Thalberg. So yeah, it's not, absolutely. It's better than call it a Cobb salad than an Irving salad. Or a Thalberg Thal salad. How about that? Yeah, that nobody would order that. Thalberg salad with iceberg lettuce. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a Thalberg was, uh, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Manny, but he was unique in that he ran the studio um, as a kind of a creative head over all the movies, but he also produced. He wasn't, he wasn't just a producer who did movies for the studio head. He was the studio head and then also did his own movies. Well, which is, technically, Louis B. Mayer was the studio head. But, well, but, yeah, but, but Louis B. Mayer, you know, he basically let what he called the Wonder Boy, uh, you know, he was the Wonderkind, uh, let him really have full reign of the studio. You're right about that. That that's I mean, Mayor was in charge of you know dispensing salaries, negotiating contracts, that right. kind of thing. The the productions themselves were were run by Thalberg. Mm. Absolutely, I, I agree that yeah. he was the one that had full reign. And you know, the question that we should ask ourselves because this is something that's never never addressed: what kind of movies would have been made if Thalberg hadn't died? Hmm. What would what would the Wizard of Oz look like? I think it would have been just as good as it is now, but a longer film. I don't think it would have been a shorter film. What kind of movies of the 1940s? I mean, what kind of career would have Judy Judy Garland might have had, right. or would Gene Kelly emerged as a as a top star? It's it's interesting to think of what Thalberg might have done with the studio. Obviously, it went in a different direction after his passing. And they were none the worse for the wear because they really became the studio uh, of, of the American musical. But it's just amazing for me to think of what Thalberg might have done with those great literary classics. You know, yep. what he might have done with, with a movie like Random Harvest. Sure. Um, you know, it, it, it's an interesting. It's an interesting question that can never be answered, really, truthfully. It, this is just an art, one of those... You know, one of those conversations you have while playing dominoes with a friend across the way. Uh, you know, it's I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. But I well, do know that Thalberg's impact on MGM was immense. And MGM became the studio with more stars than there are in the heavens. Right. That's same as, all because same as of Irving yeah. Thalberg. Yeah. And I think he had, a, uh, correct me uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but he had an influence on all of Hollywood because his films were so successful and they were so, um, at the same time, they were very uh, accessible to the audience, to, to viewers, but they were erudite. They were a little bit, uh, you know, they were from liter great literature he brought to the screen. So uh, I think he, he had a major influence on Hollywood as well, uh, or the rest of Hollywood. Well, you know, I think I believe he came from Universal because he was he wasn't allowed. Well, maybe that's not true. It might be. But I, I have to check on that. But he came from another studio because they were not allowing him to do what he wanted to do, which is to create these big, big, you know, epic, lush literary uh, type films. Uh, imagine Irving Thalberg and Warner Brothers. No, those gritty those gritty gangster films wouldn't have worked well with Thalberg. I don't think the monster films would have worked well with Thalberg yeah. as well. So, I mean, although he did work well with Lon Chaney. So, I mean, I, I can't see Thalberg at Paramount I mean, <laughs> or 20th Century Fox with their film noir. Right, right. MGM was the perfect marriage for Irving Thalberg because his films were intelligent. He, he had a reason to respect the audience. He knew the audiences would get it. He just knew it. Yeah. And, and many and many times, you know, studio heads like to dumb down movies for an audience. They like to uh, make it in its simplest way. That's true. Because they don't they don't respect the audience. Irving Thalberg always respected his audience. You know what's really yeah. uh, uh, wonderful about the, this session for me today is that, well, Manny, you always just know so much. You have so much depth of knowledge in in, uh, in any subject that we discuss. But this is the first time. That I virtually had no background in, uh, and wasn't even. Didn't, I knew we were going to talk about maybe studio heads, but uh, never even thought to uh, do any research on Thalberg. You, know, you know the mayors and the right. rest of them. Know. And so for me, this has been like a, a total eye opener. And in fact, I'm going to be going uh, off and uh, uh, searching out more information about him because uh, he's probably one of the least known of the major names, probably because he died so young. 
That's right, because he died so young. And I appreciate your candor, Art. But let me just, if you're going to look and research, begin with this movie, this one movie, Grand Hotel. Mm. Best picture of the year. And here's the, 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 the detail on Grand Hotel. Before Grand Hotel, productions would be made with one, maybe two major stars. That's it. One, maybe two. Because productions have cost. Mm -hmm. And you didn't want to go over budget. Thalberg didn't think that way. With Grand Hotel, he brought in five major stars. He changed the landscape of what a movie should look like. And in Grand Hotel, he brings in Greta Garbo, John Barrymore, Lionel Barrymore, Joan Crawford, uh, uh, Wallace Berry. And he, and he puts them all together in one great epic film. And voila, all of a sudden, all films are now made with uh, dozens of major stars. I mean, three major stars, four major stars. He changed the landscape of how a film was cast, and he did it with Grand Hotel. That's where you begin your story with, with, with Irving Thalberg, if you're going to do any research at all. Okay, well, definitely I will, uh, I will do that. I'll find it someplace and watch it online. But uh, uh, it's a fascinating story about uh, a not that well-known because it's forgotten Hollywood, and who would... If anybody would find anything that was forgotten in Hollywood, it would be Manny Pacheco. This, well, this is, yeah, Manny, this is your opportunity to plug your book. We're panning for gold here. Yes, you can uh, find my books on Amazon, uh, the Forgotten Hollywood book series. I invite you to please read my stories, hundreds and hundreds of stories, just like the ones I shared with you today. And, of course, you can read my blogs gratis on ForgottenHollywood.com. Good. Uh, Manny, this has been great, as always. I love uh, love talking movies, and you are such a font of knowledge uh, w with some great stories. Next time, maybe we can, or sometime in the future, we can talk about Dory Sherry and the MGM musicals mm -hmm. in the same way we talked about uh, Irving Thalberg. So there's so much to talk about. We'll see you again soon, I hope. Yes, looking forward to it. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.